going to be in Romans chapter 8 this morning. 8. Romans 8. 8. And we're going to be looking at verses 35 through 39. 35 through 39. So Paul here comes to the end of chapter number 8. And he's going to answer one of life's most important questions. And that question he, he asked and poses in verse number 35. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And uh, he goes on throughout the rest of the chapter to answer that. Uh, answer that great question. He is going to speak on separation from the love of God. And uh, the purpose of this portion of Scripture is to show that no one and nothing can separate us from the love of God. Paul had just walked the Romans through legalism and ignorance on the matter of salvation. And now he's bringing the good news that once you receive the love of God, there is nothing that can separate you from it. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Let's read verses 35 to 39. The Bible says... Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm thankful this morning that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ once we receive it. Paul here starts out and he, he gives the thought and the idea that tribulation and pain cannot separate us from the love of God. The tribulation and pain. Verse number 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Who shall separate us from the love of God gives this connotation of who or what. It's, it's not just who, it's not, is it a person? No. And Paul is going to make sure that he includes all things in this who can separate us from the love of God. Separate here means to place room between. And uh, so it's like when you separate two siblings that are in a sibling battle, and it's putting room between them. The love of Christ is here is toward us. I'm thankful that the love that God shows for us is toward us because we can never love God the same way that He loves us. It's impossible for us to do that. But God loves us so much that He gave His Son to die for us. He goes on to list some terrible things that can happen to us. He starts off with tribulation, distress, and persecution. All of these things cause anguish and they cause affliction to our life. And then He talks about famine and nakedness and those things have to do with our body. A necessity of life is food, water, and clothing slash shelter, right? That's, all of us need those three things in our life for us to be able to survive. And so, wh whether we're in famine or nakedness with our body, God's love cannot be separated from us. And then it talks about peril and sword, which are imminent dangers to our life. It's, it, it's like someone is chasing us with a sword ready to kill us, and that is not going to separate us from the love of God. It would seem like part of this list is dealing with our soul and the other part is dealing with our physical body. There's nothing that can, can separate our soul from the love of Christ. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. Up to this point, uh, in Romans, Paul had to, had, to, he had to bust up some myths about salvation, didn't he? The whole point of the reason that Paul has written the book of Romans is to bust up some myths and some some. Uh, bad thoughts about what salvation meant. And number one, he taught he talked in Romans chapter one about how no one is excusable from uh, coming to know the Savior as uh, as their Savior. And so he talks about that no one can live without a Savior. The second thing he talks about is that religion can't save you. No matter how hard you try, no matter how much you follow the law to the letter, religion will never save you. Then he talks about how doing the right thing can't save you. Just because you do what's right doesn't mean you are right. And so he talks about that. And then, then he busts up the last myth. And that is that you can work your way to heaven. There's nothing that we can do on our own merit to, to get us a place in heaven. There's nothing that we can do. And so Paul has had to bust up some myths. And now he's going to give them some good news. Aren't you thankful after you get some bad news that there's some good news to follow in? And he talks about that there's uh, that, 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 that the love of Christ cannot be separated from us and shows them that there's only one way to heaven, and that's through 
Jesus Christ. He now is proving to them that nothing can separate us from God's love. Notice that Paul answers the, the first question with another question. It says, what, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then he goes on to list a, a, a thing of, can these things separate us? The first question demands an answer, doesn't it? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It, it demands an answer. We, can't, we, can't not, we cannot leave that as a rhetorical question. It, it's a question that demands an answer. And Paul answers it here. He doesn't answer it with no, right? He, what shall separate us? He didn't say nothing. No, he goes on to give them a list because Paul had experienced some things in his life, hadn't he? He'd experienced persecution. He'd experienced peril. He'd experienced near-death experiences. And so Paul here said, hey, I've lived through this. I, I've seen it. I've felt it. I felt every pain and everything imaginable to man. And guess what? God still loves me. God still loves me. We too can answer the same question and we know the answer to the question and we can help others understand that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Paul goes on to use the Old Testament to emphasize the point. Paul here is bringing an Old Testament passage to remember Psalm 44.22 is what he quotes in verse number 36 when it says, For thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. The original meaning of this verse was that it was an expression of the price of loyalty to God in a world at war with Him. How many of you know that there's a price that must be paid when we're loyal to God in a world that is at war with Him? All of us know that, right? There is a, there is a price that must be paid. The purpose of this quotation uh, was, to, was to show that even if fallen God leads to our death, it will not separate us from the love of God. The original purpose of this verse was a, a petition of deliverance. The psalmist was pleading for God to deliver them from the enemies of Israel. If you go back and read the whole Psalm 44, it, it is him giving an overview of deliverance that they needed from the enemies of Israel. Now how does this apply to us today? Even if the world tries to kill us or silence us, God's love cannot be separated from us. Amen. No matter what the world throws at us, no matter what Satan throws at us, we cannot be separated from the love of God. It is attached to us no matter the circumstances. I'm thankful that when God showed His love toward us and we accepted His Son as our Savior, that the love that God has for us cannot be separated, cannot be pulled apart, cannot be taken away from us. It, it's attached to us no matter the circumstances that happen in our life. What the world may try to destroy us, it will never destroy God's love for us. Amen. The world can destroy us. They can take out this old body. But at the end of my life, God loves me so much because I've accepted Him as my personal Savior that He cannot separate me from that love. So the world can try to take it, but God cannot take it back. Then we see in verse 37 to 39 that Paul answers dogmatically. He starts off in verse number 37. It says, nay. Nay here means on the contrary or oppositely. So he's, he goes through and he asks the question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then gives a list as a question and then goes on to show them, hey, even in your death, you cannot be separated from the love of Christ. And then he finally answers the first question that he asks and he says, nay. Nay, it means, it means on the contrary or oppositely. He says, no, this tribulation, this trial that you're facing is not going to separate you, but rather it's going to bring you closer to God. While the world may try to separate us from God, and it, it, it is, God is closer to us in those trials and tribulations. These things reference back to verse 35 and 36, when it says, nay, and all these things, it talk, it's talking about the list that was given in verse number 35 and 36, and so we know that none of those things that were listed can separate us from the love of God. Matthew chapter number 5 and verse 10 says, Blessed are they which, persecuted, uh, are, which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This verse tells us that if we endure tribulation for righteousness' sakes, we will receive the kingdom of heaven. I'm thankful today that we have the promise of heaven. No matter what we're going through in our life, no matter what the world throws our way, no matter how much pain and persecution we might face in this old world, we have the promise of heaven. God is waiting patiently for us. 
Matthew 5, 11 and 12 says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. <laughs> this, this beatitude says that when men are going to revile you, when men are going to persecute you, when men are going to talk bad about you, even when it's not true, that there is a reward for us in heaven. And I'm thankful that we will be rewarded in heaven for some things. I'm thankful that uh, when we endure persecution, we will be rewarded for that persecution. But it goes on to say that the prophets were persecuted before us. Take back to the Old Testament prophets who were, were uh, I can't imagine walking into these evil cities and proclaiming thus, saith the Lord, as they're getting beaten, they're getting thrown, and they're, they're hated among men. And so well, we are in good company when we are persecuted for Christ's sake. We have a, a, an example of how to deal with the persecution and uh, the, the evil against us. All the persecution that we face, all the problems that we face will be worth it all when we see Jesus face to face. And one day we will see Jesus face to face. And, and all of our problems will not even be existent in our mind anymore. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. All the things that we've endured, all, all the hardness, all the, the, the pain, the loss, the death, all of those things that we've endured will no longer be around when we see Jesus face to face because we cannot focus on those things anymore. Because when we see Jesus, it's going to be worth it all. It also points back to Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 where it says, uh, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. I'm thankful that we know that no matter what happens in our life, it's all going to work out for good. If we love God and we're called according to His purpose, if we're following God, everything is going to work out for good, even if we can't see the end of the road. Even if our map, our GPS is offline, God is still there waiting for us and knows that everything is going to work out for our good and for His glory. It goes on to say, that in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. How do we become more than conquerors? It's because of who's on our side. Amen. When we have God on our side, nothing can conquer us, right? But we are more than conquerors. But we, we are above a conqueror because we have God on our side. Nothing can defeat us when we have God on our side. Most importantly, nothing can separate us from His love because He is all-powerful. Because of who God is, because of His attributes, and because of how He has set up this world, we cannot be separated from the love of God. Paul finally answers the question that was asked in verse 35. There is nothing that can conquer us because we are more than conquerors through God that loved us. If you think about how does this apply to me today, God's love is still inseparable from your life. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, no matter... How far you've gotten, God's love is still inseparable from your life. And we should be thankful for that today. It, trans it transcends all time, space, and matter. There is nothing created that can keep us from the love of God. We are more than comforts through God who loves us enough that He sent His Son to die in our place. It is time for us to start acting like we're conquerors, isn't it? We can't walk around as we're defeated. We can't walk around as though the world is against us. Though the world is against us, but we, we shouldn't have to act that way because we are victors. We win. And I don't know. I remember growing up, we'd always read. And we'd, we'd skip ahead in our books, and so we could find out what happened. When, when the book started getting good, we'd skip ahead to see what happened. And if you skip ahead in this book, you're going to find out that at the end of our life, we win. God is undefeated. God has never lost a battle. God can never lose a battle. And so if God says we're more than conquerors through Him that loved us, that's God is our weapon. God is the one who conquers for us. Then we see that Paul was convinced that nothing could separate us. He says in verse number 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers... Nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. I'm thankful that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Paul had a witness in his own life that he could not be separated from the love of God. He had felt pain, he felt persecution, 
He'd been through tribulation. He had near-death experiences. We could spend all morning going through all the trials that Paul had faced. And at the end of his life, he knew that he was more than conquerors through him that loved us. And he knew that God loved him. He learned that pain in the Christian life doesn't mean that our loving Father is absent, but rather that He will work it out for our good. I'm thankful this morning that God is never absent. God is never absent. He can't be absent. God is everywhere at one time. God is right there in the midst of our trials. He's right there in the midst of our persecutions. And He is going to work it out for good no matter how far ahead we can see. Then we look at Paul's list. It's it's like uh, opposites right here. So uh, whether it's life or whether it's death, it can't separate us. Whether it's angels or principalities and powers, it can't separate us. Whether it's things present, things that are going on in this present world, or things to come, it can't separate us. And whether it's height or whether it's depth, it cannot separate us from the love of God. And I'm thankful for that this morning. You should be as well. The application for today is that Satan and the world can try everything they have in their power to overcome God's love for us or to separate us from it, can't they? They can try everything they want. They can do whatever they want. They can try their hardest, but they cannot separate us from God. They're facing an all-powerful, all-knowing God who will take care of His own. Nothing ever can and nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God and His love for us. No matter how hard the world tries, it cannot separate us from the love of God. Amen. Then we look at God's inseparable love for us. God's love transcends distance. I'm thankful that no matter where we are in this world, no matter where we are in this life, that God's love is right there with us. Psalm 139, verses 7 and 8 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I transcend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. I'm thankful that no matter where we are in our life, that God is right there in the midst of it. God is right there with us. There is not a place that God's love cannot reach. God's love transcends all time, space, and matter. God's love reaches the unreachable. The depths of love for uh, God has for us cannot be comprehended by our finite mind. There, our, our little minds cannot understand God's great love for us. No created thing can separate us from God's love. No created thing can separate us from God's love. I'm thankful that nothing that has ever been created can separate us from God's love. I know there's a lot of distractions this morning. I'm a, I'm a little distracted too. I'm very sorry. But there are a lot of moving parts going on. And so uh, let, let's do our very best, myself included, to just focus on God. Because He is so good to us. And uh, we have so much to be thankful for. So we know that the depths of God's love for us cannot be comprehended by our finite mind. We have little brains compared to the, the, the almighty, eternal God. But we cannot understand God's love for us. We know that, that no created thing can separate us from God's love. I'm thankful that Paul not only said, uh, he not only listed all of these things here, but then he says, nor any other creature. That means nothing created by God can separate us from that love. We know that Paul didn't leave anything out. There is nothing in this whole world that can separate us from God's love. And we can be thankful for that this morning. God's love is shown to us through His Son. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm thankful that there is life after this death. Amen. And, and God's love is there with us. God's love has been with us from the very beginning of time. God loved man so much that he knew when he created the world that the world would fail him. He knew that Adam and Eve were going to sin. And yet he still created them knowing that, knowing he would have to send his son as a sacrifice. That's how much God loves us. God's love is inseparable from us. Nothing that has ever been created can separate us from the love of God, which is shown to us through Him giving His Son as a willing sacrifice to us. He died in our place, which is the greatest show of love that He could give us. God dying, in, God sending His Son to die in my place is the greatest show of love He could ever give. We think about our life. 
most of us in here are not going to have to give our life for any, any, anything, right? We're not going to have to give our life for loving God that we know of right now. But God knowingly created a world where he knew he'd have to give a son to die on a cross. And he did that willingly for us because he loved us so much. The application for today is that God's love is greater than anything you are facing today or that you will ever face in this lifetime. God's love is much greater, far greater, far better. The love of God, it, it, we can't, we, we try to define it with our words and, and we think about the strongest form of love in, in the Greek, agape, and that doesn't even do, it's, that doesn't even touch the surface of the love that God has for us. God loves us so much that He gave us His Son. And we cannot be separated from that love. If you have never experienced the love of God, you can today. God's love is unending. It's, it doesn't have an end date. It doesn't have, it does have an end date, doesn't it? The tribulation, you know, when, when this world is passed away, that's when God's love is only towards those who have accepted Christ as the Savior. Uh, but we know that God's love, it, it, He never runs out, is what I was trying to say. Not that it never ends. He never runs out of love. And it's not like our gas tank where we drive, you know, a, a couple hundred miles and then we have to get more gas. It's not like that. God's love, it can, can never run out. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Paul was posing a question, and he answered it with a question to show the Romans that no created thing can separate us from the love of God, which is shown through Christ Jesus. I'm so thankful that God loved us enough to send His Son. Amen. And as we go through this time, and, and, and I know that I've said it over and over and over and over, but Christmas time is one of the, the, the best times to get people to come to church. Yeah. And it, some people, it's the only time they ever come to church, and we have to show that God's love is amazing, right? And God loves way, way more than we can ever even comprehend. He loved us so much that He gave us Son. And so this Christmas season, as we think about the little baby that was born, let's think about why the baby was born, right? We, we can't get so focused on His birth that we forget about His death. We can't get so focused on His death that we forget about His burial. And we can't get so focused on His burial that we forget about His resurrection because it's all intertwined. It's all the gospel, isn't it? Now I'm thankful that we have the gospel. And let's do our very best to share it this Christmas season. Let's not let Christmas be in vain. Let's not let the birth of Christ be in vain. Let's go forward for Him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we're thankful this morning for Your love. God, we're thankful that we have the, the privilege of being in Your family. God, we're thankful that no matter what we do, no matter where we go, no matter how bad our life gets, God, Your love is inseparable from it. There's nothing that can come between your love for us. God, help us to live that way. Help us to live a victorious Christian life knowing that no matter what happens in our life, no matter the persecution that we might face, God, you are right there in the mix loving us more than we could ever know. God, help us this morning as we listen to singing and hear preaching from your word. God, help us to focus on you. And you say pray. Amen.